Welcome to chapter three of the NFV 101 course. This chapter is titled NFV Use Cases. We have looked at NFV use cases from a couple of different angles in previous chapters, but in this chapter, we are going to go a little bit deeper with specific focus on cable use cases. Etsy has done a lot of work on NFV use cases. They have a document titled GRNFV001, <clears throat> there's a link below, that highlights 15 NFV use cases. Obviously, the number of use cases that, that could be there is, is infinite, and it's uh, 15 is just the number that Etsy chose to uh, go into in a little bit more detail and provide sort of guidance and detailed explanation to, to the community. Out of those 15, we are going to take a look at seven. So in some sense, subset of a subset. So let's, uh, let's take a look at what Etsy has done in, in these seven use cases. So the first bucket is virtual mobile base station and virtual mobile core and IMS. So with 5G around the corner, this whole category is very important. It includes virtual radio area network or VRAN. It includes the mobile core network, virtual EPC, wall packet core, optimized for 5G. It includes IP multimedia subsystem for things like voice over IP, edge computing, and all of this combined will enable things like advanced 5G use cases such as network slicing, edge computing applications, etc. The fixed access NFV is the counterpart to the mobile use case that we just discussed. And with tremendous growth in fixed um, wireline bandwidth, cable or fiber, there's just a tremendous set of new applications that could be unleashed, ranging from augmented reality, virtual reality, collaborative gaming, e-learning, etc. Next is virtual CDN. Virtual CDN, CDN is, is a well-known edge use case. It exists today. It's existed for the last you know, 15 years. Uh, what vCDN or virtual CDN does is it takes the CDN and moves it from proprietary boxes to industry standard boxes and takes the CDN portion and makes it into a piece of software. So it, uh, when you do that, you get all the benefits of NFV. It's a lot easier to manage, a lot easier to deploy, scale, update, upgrade, uh, and the ability to use standardized hardware. With uh, edge computing, VCDN will also move closer to users and to provide higher and higher bandwidth and higher quality of experience. It'll move to from, say, point of presence to, to edge locations. These are all, and it shows the locations of these use cases, either in Access Edge or in Virtual Mobile Core and IMS. It's in core and uh, regional data center locations. The next set of use cases span across. So depending on what's going on, the aspects of that application may be on-prem and aspects may be all the way into, the, into a hyperscale data center or even a public cloud. So for example, virtual home environment. Virtual home environment is a tremendously exciting area, especially for cable operators because it promises new revenue. And each application can be used to generate incrementally, uh, incremental additional revenue. So for example, you could have edge applications, the types that we already discussed. It could be uh, tactile internet, it could be AR, VR, et cetera extended DLNA, video caching to provide premium 360 degree 4K video. It could be a whole category of new applications in the security space. It can be firewall, it can be intrusion prevention, antivirus, home security, video surveillance with machine learning so that uh, not only is it looking at sort of videos, uh, or, and what's going on around the house, but is also recognizing images. 
Additionally, you can have network optimization set of applications, quality of service, IPv6, parental control, guest access, managed services, managing their home network, for example. It can be other types of applications, for example, an IoT gateway, voice over IP, smart home applications. So these are just tremendously exciting uh, and they can span. Some may reside on-prem, some can be on the edge environment, some can be in regional data centers, and some can be in hyperscale, depending on the attributes that we talked about in the previous chapter. Next uh, use case is IoT. And IoT, we've already talked about a little bit, but it can include things like autonomous cars, variables, smart homes, smart factories, et cetera, smart buildings, smart cities. And security functions, we already covered several in the virtual home environment, but from an enterprise point of view, there could be more. There could be different types of firewall. There could be intrusion prevention and intrusion detection, et cetera. So these are just a subset of the use cases that Etsy summarized, which in turn is a subset of all possible NFE use cases. Now let's look at a subset of use cases that have particular relevance to the cable industry. The first one we'll look at is converged mobile and Wi-Fi. Obviously, cable providers are expected to play a big role in 5G. It's not just mobile operators. And with something like converged mobile and Wi-Fi, it provides cable operators a unique differentiator. Um, since today, if you see, most of the wireless traffic is, is over Wi-Fi and not cellular networks. Next is remote Fi device and virtual CCAP core. We are going to look at this in a little bit more detail in subsequent slides, so let's hold off on that streaming video. With all the excitement we talked about on video in the previous slide, uh, this, is, this is a huge area for cable operators to capitalize on. And then we have a set of applications like in the previous slide that span different locations, virtual set-top box or cable modem, all the services that we talked about in the previous slide for home and enterprise can be provided in a virtual set-top box or a virtual cable modem environment. They, some can be on-prem, some can be on the access edge, so on and so forth. SD-WAN and Enterprises Services is a brand new source of growing revenue for cable operators, and we'll look at it in more detail, so let's hold off. Uh, security functions such as virtual firewall and IoT. So let's look at a few of these in more detail. So let's look at virtual firewall today. So today, the virtual firewall is a physical piece of functionality that's uh, between the corporate network and the cable modem intended to uh, protect the enterprise. In the virtualized uh, case, the cable modem is now just a dumb cable modem, just providing connectivity, and the virtual firewall is moved to the regional data center. It's still providing the same level of protection from attacks from the internet, but now it's a virtualized piece of functionality and you can get all the benefits of NFE. For example, reduced hardware, right? It's no longer a piece of hardware that has to be shipped or truck rolls to maintain it or retire it. It's simply a piece of software. Simplify the deployment by going on a standardized piece of hardware uh, and reducing the dependency for purpose-built hardware and just flexibility in optimizing uh, post-deployment configuration changes, uh, try different options, try before you buy. All the benefits we talked about on, for NFE apply here. Next, let's look at virtual CCAP core and RPD in a little bit more detail. Before we jump in, what are the current CCAP limitations? First is bandwidth. The need for bandwidth is continuously increasing and to 
circumvent that limitation on a current CCAP means hardware upgrade. Limited space and head end in the head end slash hub, the amount of space is fixed and constrained, and the requirements keep going up higher and higher, and that creates an issue. Similar to limited space, there's limited cooling and power available, but the needs keep going up, which is putting pressure on power and cooling costs. New features take time. This is related to the first point we talked about. New features can require a new chip, new boards, a new system, new software, new qualification, which can be a multi-year cycle. And the operational costs are high because of manual management, things like performance management, whether it's intermittent or systemic, fault management, etc., all have to be handled manually. So let's look at the solution. The combination of remote FI device and virtual CCAP core addresses the limitation. Our remote FI device or RPD is the notion of moving the FI device deeper into the cable plant closer to the subscriber. And when that happens, that frees the CCAP form factor from being constrained by FI devices, which, which is the case today. It's, the form factor is constrained by how many FI devices you can have to um, being freed from that constraint. And the second innovation is to replace CCAP with commodity servers running vCCAP core software. It becomes a VNF, thus realizing all the benefits of VN NFV that we talked about. And just a side note, RPD can be, uh, does need not be deeper in the cable plant closer to the subscriber. It can be right next to the VC cap core and it can be in a remote file shelf. And you get some of the same benefits uh, in terms of freeing the VC cap core from that form factor um, in this architecture. So let's look a little bit deeper into the technology. RPD moves the RFI device closer to the subscriber and the northbound protocol is IP slash ethernet over fiber and the southbound interface is QAM signaling over coax and it can, uh, it's used with virtual CCAP but it need not be, it can also be used with a traditional CCAP. But VCCAP core technology, you're replacing a proprietary piece of fixed function hardware with a commodity server which is now running VCCAP core as a VNF, as a piece of software. And the core routing and business functions are now virtualized. There is a downside to all of this as well. It's everything so far, you know, we are painting a rosy picture, but there are new security issues that pop up. So security processes need retooling. And there may be new performance issues that come up in terms of crypto performance that have to be considered. And we talked about these requirements in the previous module. Let's look at uh, SD-WAN and enterprise services in more detail. So the S this shows the SD-WAN topology where you have branches on the right and each branch has either a server, x86 server, or a UCPE device. A UCPE device stands for Universal Customer Premise Equipment. And that's a very small box with a lightweight Intel or ARM server. And for that matter, the server itself can be x86 or ARM. So these branches are then connected to headquarters, which also has a x86 server or UCP. And there could be multiple paths. So the paths could be over MPLS and the path could be over internet. The internet path is interesting. It also allows for a path to public cloud services, IAS or SaaS. So things like Microsoft Azure, Amazon Web Services, Salesforce.com, etc., can all be accessed through that path. So in addition to the physical data plane connectivity, there's also an SD-WAN controller that resides somewhere in the cable operator's cloud. So the SD-WAN controller is configuring all these paths. It's doing granular control in terms of quality of service, path optimization, et cetera, visibility. And this whole concept combined is SD-WAN and the benefits in it, 
sort of in a generic sense are the benefits we talked about of NFE already, but in a more specific sense, first, there's a cost benefit because uh, users are now able to use internet in addition to dedicated networks. Increase visibility, optimize performance. We talked about sort of granular QoS, granular performance, etc. Setting up policies for different data from different applications. Efficiency and flexibility to be able to change things simply by a click of a button. In addition to cutting costs, there's additional benefit to users in terms of business services, new business services. So an operator can offer things like van acceleration, security, caching, and other services. Some of the major benefits of SD-WAN to customers are reducing OPEX and CAPEX by effectively using broadband connections. So we talked about this. In addition to using dedicated net networks, it can now use internet and can uh, flow different types of traffic over different networks depending on the requirements. Simplified connectivity between customer sites and cloud providers and increased security through site-to-site -site encryption and micro-segmentation. This shows a quantitative view of the, the benefits that we talked about. Uh, Gartner shows that the business bandwidth is going to keep increasing through 2018, something we already know, but this just puts a number, 52% cumulative growth, which is massive. SD-WAN growth through 2021, according to IDC, is 70% growth. That's, that's just huge. 30% uh, of enterprises plan to migrate to SD-WAN by 2018, according to IDC. The SMB cable share is uh, undergoing 20 to 30 percent is 20 to 30 percent with a 20 percent growth according to heavy reading and when you combine that with SD WAN point uh, that's just great news for cable providers and on the flip side as we expect MPLS cumulative growth is slowing through 2021 to 4 percent still still a positive growth just slowing down in conclusion there are numerous use cases that are supported by NFE. Etsy has explained 15 of them in more detail, and we talked about seven of those. Then we talked about a subset that are relevant to cable providers, and the three that, that sort of stand out are RPD plus VCCAP core. We talked about that. SD-WAN, we covered that. And the last one is mobile, converged mobile and Wi-Fi. We didn't specifically talk about that in, uh, in any great detail, but we do have a subsequent slide that covers it in more detail.